Who's ready for something completely different? Okay, well, we'll have more of the same. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so next up is, uh, is Dr. Kevin Snyder. And Kevin would want me to tell you that the presentation begins even before the speaker steps on stage. And he has given me very explicit instructions to read his bio as written. <clears throat> So Dr. Kevin Snyder is a recovering professional speaker who has presented keynotes and workshops for over 1 million people through 1,000 audiences in all 50 states and several countries. He is the only speaker in the world who recently received the accredited speaker designation. Groups that Kevin speak to range from students to C-suite executives and employees and association members at all levels in between. And his programs educate, engage, empower, audiences to shift their thinking to envision new possibilities and build stronger, resilient teams. Prior to resigning his day job to pursue his dream job, of professional speaking, Kevin held a career in student affairs, most recently serving as the Dean of Students at High Point University. Kevin is the author of several best-selling books, two of which you will receive a free copy of today. Kevin is also a multiple TEDx speaker and lives right here in Raleigh, North Carolina with his amazing family. And a fun fact, about Kevin, he lived his childhood dream of meeting Bob Barker and winning big on the television game show, The Price is Right. So please join me in welcoming our next speaker, Dr. Kevin Snyder. Kevin, come on down. Come on, twice as loud for Evan, come on. All right, where are my Journey fans? All right, if everybody waves their arm, it doesn't look weird. Come on, everybody, first song with me. This is Keynote Karaoke. Living in a... Oh, come on, twice as loud, here we go. She took the midnight train going. You sound pretty good. All right, turn to somebody sitting next to you and say, hey, you sound pretty good. <laughs> yes, that was in the script. Can we give another shout out for Evan Carroll? Probably the most random introduction you've ever heard, yes? Yeah, I'm your cousin Eddie, right? I'm your cousin Eddie. If you don't know who cousin Eddie is, you are one, okay? We all have that person in our family. And I always like my introductions to be interactive because I want something that you connect to, hopefully, before I even start speaking. Does that sound good? Yes or yes? Okay, <laughs> excellent today. Now, where are my Price is Right fans? Okay, there we go. Freeze. Raise your hands if you're a Price is Right fan. Proudly. Now, freeze, look around. If you see someone with their hand not up, check their pulse. <laughs> We've all yelled at that television at some point in the future, right? Or at some point in the past. So our time is short. I hope the value will leave lasting impact. My goals for my presentation with you today, Go USA, yes, World Cup 2022. My goals for us today are to introduce to you my shift thinker framework. Now, we got to be real careful how we say that. Repeat with me. Say shift. shift. One more time. Shift. shift. One more time. Shift. shift. Right? <laughs> and the shift thinker framework I developed amongst the pandemic to help people push through and create and find opportunity that they would not have had otherwise. Some of us, it requires a small shift. Maybe there's a big shift that we need to make. So today I'll reveal this framework that I feel can help us with how we inspire people, how we engage people, and also how do we empower them to actually be fulfilled and achieve their goals. So that's objective number one. Objective number two is if any of you are interested in actually being able to use any of this content, you can actually apply it in your day to day. Would that be of interest to you? Yes or yes? Okay, good, <laughs> not giving you a choice. And then number three, to any of you who are active participants, get a free copy of my books. Woohoo! you're welcome. Yeah. Hashtag you're welcome. All right, so let's talk a little bit about why Shift Thinker. Now I grew up in Durham, North Carolina. And as we all know, in that area, it's basketball country, right? We talk about, we talk about basketball, in that time of year. We don't want to talk too much about football, but we talk about basketball. Well, I grew up knowing what pivot meant. My dad was a coach and I played basketball. Pivoting actually was a basketball term. But the pandemic 
made pivoting popular. Repeat that with me one more time. Say, the pandemic made pivoting popular. Would you agree with that, right? I never heard of pivoting as a leadership phrase. It was always something I thought just about basketball. So I'm not going to tell you my sport here or who, what family that I, or what uh, team I might root for. <laughs> but let's just say I grew up in a house divided. Now pivoting, let's talk about pivoting just for a moment. What do we do in basketball when we're pivoting? What are we doing? Right. You've got one foot anchored, but it's short-term protection. Short-term protection. It's temporary, right? At some point, if we want to move forward, if we want to progress, we need to do what? We need to dribble. We need to pass. We need to shoot. There you go. Thank you. Right? What I've discovered, even now, many organizations, what are they still doing? It starts with a P, right? They're still pivoting. So what we want to make sure that we're understanding is sometimes just the language that we use, the phrasing, can actually inspire positive change. You know, I've got two young kids now. I don't know if you do as well or if you grew up with a hamster or a gerbil, but it's fascinating when they're spinning that wheel. That wheel is going really, really fast. But where's that hamster going? Nowhere, right? Have you ever felt like that at work? <laughs> right? So we need to be clear that Pivoting will not help us move forward. It had its purpose in 2020. But in 2021, the organizations were still pivoting. 2022, still pivoting. What, how's everything going to be different in 2023? So we need, to, we need to shift. And even Einstein defined insanity as doing the same thing over and over again, yet expecting what? A different result. So part of today, yeah, I want to remind you of what you already know. I think my framework, it's, it's universal. It can be applied in a variety of, of different things. So not a, instead of pivoting, we want, to, we want to shift. And don't take my word for it. Take our, our words at Friends. <laughs> if you've ever seen this episode, there's a Friends episode for any situation that you can possibly imagine, right? And they're trying to get a couch up the stairs. Check this out. Here we go. So we don't want to pivot. We want to do what? Thank you. Twice as loud. We want to do what? Chill. There we go. We got to say it the right way. So I'm Chef Snyder. I'm going to serve you today with these four very brief appetizers for what my keynote titled Becoming a Shift Thinker is all about. And it starts with a growth mindset. A growth mindset. Repeat that with me. Say growth mindset. Is a growth mindset essential for success? Yes or yes? yes? Absolutely it is. And one of the things that I discovered amidst the pandemic was adversity does not define us. It actually reveals opportunities that we would not have had otherwise. You know, circumstances may not be ideal. Situations might have some challenges. But can we still grow? Absolutely. With the right mindset, we can grow through any adversity any challenge, and sometimes we just simply need to push through. And I'm an acronym guy. If you're taking notes, write this one down. PUSH stands for, say it with me if you want, persist until something happens, right? To, to push through that. So how is a growth mindset different than a fixed mindset? Well, a, growth, a fixed mindset is easily frustrated. Would you agree with that? Whereas a growth mindset is it's resilient. Right? A fixed mindset resists change, whereas a growth mindset embraces and wants to lead change. A fixed mindset is content with the status quo or where things are, whereas a growth mindset wants to do what? Continually want to get better. And then a fixed mindset also focuses on mistakes made, whereas a growth mindset sees those mistakes as lessons earned. Lessons we would not have earned 
otherwise. And it's essential not just in our personal lives and even in our relationships, but also in our businesses, in our organizations, our associations. In 1955, Edgar Smith created the Fortune 500 list, which was the top 500 organizations in revenue. Well, here we are now, many years later. How many of those organizations do you think are still around? Give me a little prices right. Throw, throw me a number, I'll tell you to go higher or lower. Five. Five. Up. 25. Up. 150. Down. 175. Down. 60. Ding, 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 ding. I think I heard a 50. You get a free book. Whoever said it, you get a book. I'm your Oprah. But 50 of these organizations, organizations plus or minus, are still around. Let's talk about a few really, really quick. Kodak. Anybody heard Kodak? If you've got kids, they haven't. <laughs> Anybody here heard of Blockbuster? Yeah. <laughs> if you've got kids, guess what? They haven't. What have they heard of? Netflix. Netflix. So what happened to Blockbuster? Netflix. Got Netflixed, right? <laughs> Anybody here have a Sony Walkman? Maybe somewhere in your attic? Right? Go find it. It's probably worth a lot of money. So when we look at these three organizations, just examples, some fun examples with a hard truth. What happened? They were at the top of their game. Extremely successful. Did they develop a fixed mindset or a growth mindset? Fixed. fixed. You know, Freddy Krueger, who's known as the dream killer, if any of you are into those movies, let me tell you what the real dream killer is for any of us. It's complacency. It's when we feel comfortable about something, like it's always going to be this way. And that's true in business, my friends, and at least from my experience, it's true in relationships as well. When one person stops growing, we grow apart. So what I love to do in my, in my keynotes and also in my trainings is help people, how do you develop not just a growth mindset within yourself and in others, but also how do we do that as a culture? Because do you feel like growth mindsets could also impact the culture of an organization? Yeah, absolutely. But it's not easy. It's not easy. I was diagnosed with depression when I was 12 years old. I share this with my audiences because I want them to know. I'm aware that this is not easy to just talk about a growth mindset and everything's great. I was diagnosed also with an eating disorder that nearly killed me. And a question that my counselor asked me was in a session one day, what would you do if, if a song came on the radio that you did not like? What would you do? Well, back then, <laughs> You change the, the station. What she was trying to help me understand was just because I had a negative thought, it didn't mean I had to agree with it. Mm. Didn't know that I had that power as a 12-year-old boy or as a professional. And when we got in the car that day on the way home from that counseling session, my mom turned on the radio, what song do you think came on? There's no coincidence, my friends, that we started off with that song. <laughs> Don't Stop Believing is not just the number one song of all time. In my opinion, it's also the number one determinant of our success. But don't stop believing. Help me understand the second principle of shift thinker, which I'm going to speed through, which is the power of how to think different. Repeat that with me. Say, think different. Think different. Our thinking is often the problem until we discover how to make it the solution. So think differently is the second piece of this puzzle with how do we shift our thinking. And that's the copy of the book that you'll get a free, free copy of if you choose to just see me afterwards. Ask for it. And here's an activity I also love to do with my audiences, and you can do this with your teams as well. Help us think differently. Well, how do you connect all nine dots with four straight lines? You've probably seen this activity. Well, you got to do what? you got to think outside the box. And when we achieve our goal, because we've thought differently, do you think we're more likely to want to do it the next time? Absolutely. That's how we push through our comfort zones. That's how we grow and, and become comfortable being a little uncomfortable. And that's a quality of extraordinary leaders, or people that at least achieve their goals. Do I have any skydivers in the house? OK, one or two brave souls. Why would you jump out of a perfectly good plane, right? Why would you do that? <laughs> but think about what a skydiver does. Here's a video of my first jump. You're getting pushed out of a perfectly good plane. You're strapped to somebody you do not know. And within 15 seconds of you jumping out of that plane, you went from terrified to what? Exhilarated. Why did I wait so long? And then to my friends and my volunteers who raised your hand, when you landed, what did you want to do? 
Oh. <laughs> she says, she's the anomaly. She, what did you want to do? Do it again. <laughs> right. But most, most people want to do it again. And I think that's what Think Differently can help us do, to feel the fear and do it anyway. I mean, when's the last time you intentionally made yourself uncomfortable? Intentionally. You know, how do we reframe the squiggles in life, the adversity, the challenges, the mistakes? Let's reframe those. How do we think differently about those, right? Think about one of your proudest accomplishments just for a moment. What's something in your life that you're most proud about? For anybody, was it easy and overnight? Probably not, right? So we have to think differently. The things we care most about are also going to be the things that we have to work the hardest for. So in the short time that I have with you left, I want to introduce you to a story I, I enjoy sharing. It's the story of Roger Bannister. In 1954, he had a growth mindset. He thought differently, but he also envisioned new opportunity, our third principle, the no. Envision the no, the new opportunity. So does somebody know what Roger Bannister did, which is why we're talking about him? What achievement did he accomplish? Okay, I heard a couple of people say the four-minute mile. Prior to 1954, people thought it was impossible then Roger Bannister did it because he believed in himself. He envisioned it. He had to be a yay-sayer surrounded by naysayers. And then since 1954, do you think other people have been able to do it or was it just Roger? Right. Thousands have because they saw that one person made it possible. So think about the no that maybe you've experienced recently. Has somebody told you you can't do something? Maybe you told yourself. No is an acronym that stands for new opportunity. Say that with me, new opportunity. And there's many of these examples I share in my keynotes, but also in my book. And frankly, my friends, I don't think we're any different as association professionals, as meeting planners, as speakers, as individuals and human beings, when we envision something that we truly, truly want. So as a kid, the one vision that I had was I wanted to be on The Price is Right. Where are my Price is Right fans? Right? <laughs> and this was my dream was to meet Bob Barker. So I actually go into the grocery store. My mom and I, she'd be shopping for groceries. What do you think I was doing? I'm price checking, right? A teenager should not know the price of Metamucil. Go to college, arrange my class schedule around the show for four years. And I go to a conference just like this, and I show up, and I meet a guy who was on the show who had just won a gazebo on The Price is Right. <laughs> so Chris tells me, hey, come all the way out to California. I'll help you get on the show. He explained to me exactly how to get on the show. So if you want to know, just come see me afterward. I order tickets for the show. The tickets were the same date as my college graduation. So I had a choice to make. Go to my college graduation or go out and be on The Price is Right. What would you do? <laughs> At the thrill of my parents, I skipped my college graduation to go to The Price is Right. We show up at 2 a.m. The parking lot was closed because it was canceled. Oh. Why are you laughing at my pain? <laughs> and on the way back, you think I had some internal head trash creep back into my life? Yeah, I gave up on my dream, actually, because it was stupid anyway. That's what people told me. My mom was waiting in the driveway. She gives me a big hug, and she goes, Kevin, don't stop believing in your dream. So then I took her credit card, ran up, ordered a flight, got the tickets again, had to wait three months, and then I flew back out to LA. Chris picked me up one more time. Guess what happened? Actual retail price, $16.25. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kevin, thank you, thank you. Kevin, my man. Listen to what Rod has to tell you. Kevin, you have a chance to win $10,000 in cash. $10,000 on the punch board. My boy, you are there with $5,000. $5,000. Oh, Kevin, you are, you are $5,000 richer. You stop. He's going to quit right now. Well done. Spend your money wisely. <laughs> so to my ANC friends, I lived a dream because I simply had one. Think about that. I envisioned 
the new opportunity. So my challenge to you, this was, if, if this was my vision, I encourage you to ask yourself, what's your price is right? Maybe that's why I'm in front of you today. But there is a missing piece to this. There is a missing piece that we need to end with. Because so far, the first three principles are all what? They're all mental. They're all what's, what we allow to go on inside here to shift our thinking. What's the missing piece? What do you think it is? Right. It's action. You know why? Repeat with me. Action changes things. Action changes things. Action. A vision without action is nothing but a daydream. So at some point, yes, we're going to have to figure out what does, that, what does that look like? How do we apply? What are some of those strategies? I'd be honored to help you with that. So for those of you that would like to get a free copy of my book, where are you? Raise your hand. All right. Well, guess what? QR codes are back. <laughs> I'll leave this QR code up for just a moment, but you can also see me afterward and give you a free copy of my book. You're welcome. Have your, help control the pet population. Have your pet spayed and neutered. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>